what is scarier than Halloween? Well, Halloween in the snow, of course. Halloween in the snow during a pandemic. And I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this, watching Doug trudge through the snow to the mailbox. And of course, this is all what we call Fwinta. Uh, this is actually the fall season in Canada, but I call it Fwinta because previous to fall it was Puinta. Now it's Fwinta. And it's before Halloween. So most Canadian kids, if they were ever going out for Halloween at all during a pandemic, would put on their wonderful costumes and then put a snowsuit over top of it. And you'd have to ask the kid at the door, what are you supposed to be? I'm a bumblebee. Okay, well you have to take the park off to show me that. And what's in the mailbox today? And it's a notice from Canada Post that my pen is at the post office because I owe duty on it. You know what I think of duty? Duty! Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Happy Halloween to everyone out there in shutdown land. I hope you're all being safe and following safe Halloween and a pandemic rules of protocol like I am. Tonight I'm going to stand in an upstairs window and bean as many little petri dish monsters as I can with tiny chocolate bars. We'll see how that goes. This might be my final broadcast. But I digress. To the scary pen review at hand, today's fountain pen is the Platinum President. How fortuitous that this pen and review should come on the eve of a presidential election. I didn't plan this. This presidential pen does not, I repeat not, come with a fat felt tip. This is an incredible fountain pen and it is a real pleasure to write with on the heels of that sewing machine needle I reviewed last Wednesday. Thank you all for your comments of support on that review. That pen is being donated. It will no doubt be a real help to some seamstress somewhere. Now join me as I check the box to vote for this particular black president, one of the best fountain pens of the year that shall not be named. This is 2020. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Here is the package just arrived. And here we are, it's a Platinum. And you might recall that I had a poll on my channel, on my community channel, uh, where I asked which pen should I get, and the winner was a Platinum 3776. And this is not that pen. I discovered a bigger pen than the 3776 and got a great deal on this one. So this is the Platinum President and it's uh, perfectly timed for the upcoming election and I'll be following the election by writing notes with my new Platinum President. Let's open it up. So we have a nice faux leather box. And here we have a warranty card, which is one year, a president pamphlet, which has information on the mechanical pencil and the ballpoint, and of course the fountain pen. And here we have the pen. There's one platinum proprietary cartridge and the pen in its condom. And there's a small tag on here. Model number PTB 20,000P. And we have the pen. This is very nice immediately it's a little heavier than a now i don't own a 3776 but i've handled them quite a bit and i've written and sampled with the 3776 for quite a while 
and it always felt just a little bit small to me and a little bit insubstantial this is the opposite it has a little bit more heft to it immediately and this is what I want to look at this nib okay this is very nice okay I'm gonna enjoy reviewing this pen so I'm gonna clean this pen out and we'll do a full review happy Halloween so here is the platinum president what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen I began my interest in platinum by admiring the 3776 century I saw them in my local pen shop in that display stand with all the available nibs to sample I had a nagging feeling that the pen felt just a little too light in my hand and the price point was a little too steep for an injection molded pen yes it was a 14 karat gold nib but the nib felt just like a steel nib even though it's very attractive when I did the poll where I asked you guys to choose my next pen the 3776 won but I was still hesitant even though everyone seems to love the 3776 and then I found this president a much girthier pen with an 18 karat gold nib which is very attractive I'm glad I did the leap over the 3776 for this model I'm no beginner with the platinum brand either here are all the platinum pens I've reviewed I'll put a link to the playlist I have for platinum in the description but here they are in order of price there's the preppy the profonte the plaisir the plalance no that's balance so someone's got to talk to them about their naming and the president now before I get into looking at the parts and features of the president let's examine the design aesthetic of this pen and see whether this design rings any bells well it does look a bit like a Wingsung 699 now doesn't it there's some similarities rounded ends and what could be the link between the Wingsung 699 and the Platinum President I wonder you know I'm beginning to feel my spidey senses tingling here I'm beginning to get that nagging feeling that something about the President is going to morally offend me here what is it about the president that morally offends me I know I'm gonna put on my internet research thinking cap and activate my copyright design sniffer senses and I begin to see a pattern I've got it the platinum president is a ripoff of the pilot 823 oh my god I'm so offended I should burn this pen no wait just a moment uh, my, my due diligence tells me that pilot came out with the 823 design in the year 2000 after platinum came out with the president so pilot ripped off platinum and then wingsong ripped off pilot okay now I'm getting confused with whom I'm supposed to be morally outraged um, well let's dig deeper so platinum came up with the president in 1994 okay but it still looks familiar what does it look like um, oh my god I have it they ripped off the sailor the sailor 1911 large came out in 1985 and the platinum president is a shameless copy of the sailor horrible outrageous morally repugnant I'm burning this pen right now but wait no that sailor it looks like another pen too doesn't it what does it look like um oh my god yes the Mont Blanc 146 the sailor 1911 is the spitting image copy knockoff ripoff of the Holy Grail itself which came out in the late 1940s in Germany 
So sailor, you're despicable. If I had a 1911 large, I would burn it. But wait a tick. Wait a tick. My moral outrage spidey senses are tingling again. When I look at the Mont Blanc 149, oh my God, this can't be. I'm going to lose my lunch if they have taken any part of that Mont Blanc design from any other pen manufacturer. No! They stole the bullet, cigar, torpedo shape from the Schaefer balance of 1928. I'm verklempt. Listening to your story, I'm a little verklempt myself. Oh, what a kid. Just a little verklempt. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. Here's the Schaefer balance right here. Um, ignore the fact that this is actually wing sung for the moment. And share my outrage that Mont Blanc ripped off Schaefer and then Sailor ripped off Mont Blanc and then Platinum ripped off Sailor, and then Pilot ripped off Platinum, and then horror of horrors, the damn Chinese ripped off all of them by going after the first and the last of them with the Wing Song 626 and the Wing Song 699. I'm throwing my Wing Song 699 in the trash in protest of this outrage. But wait a tick. Wait a tick. This 699 is a vacuum filler and the pilot it ripped off is a piston filler okay now I'm confused again but wait a tick wait a tick Wingsong has just come out with a new 699 which is a piston filler now it really is a ripoff of the 823 which ripped off the platinum which ripped off the sailor which ripped off the Mont Blanc which ripped off the shaver okay now my plan of outrage at my offended sensibilities is clear. I will buy the Wingsung 699 piston filler version and then burn it in protest. In order to assuage the hurt feelings of all the pens that went before, I feel it incumbent on me to ensure I have a copy of each of the preceding fountain pens to examine and judge the level of moral outrage I should experience and ensure the resulting punishment the Chinese ripoffs should receive. Before I sacrifice this pen on the altar of hurt corporate feelings, let's take a good look at it. Overall, the president is almost identical to the Sailor 1911 Large. Let's put the image of the Sailor 1911 Large up over this pen, and you can see the similarities. Other than a slightly different stamp shape on the clip, an extra gold ring on the end of the section, and different branding on the cap and nibs, these two pens are the same. As I mentioned in my tongue-in-cheek rant, the Sailor model predates the President by a decade, and the Sailor is only one gold cap ring short of being a Mont Blanc 146. The hypocritical attitude that the Sailor 1911 Large is only inspired by and not a ripoff of the Mont Blanc, and yet the Moonman T2 is a complete ripoff of the Stipula Vantadu, even though it is different in dimensions, section, and filling system, is not lost on some of us. From the top, we don't see a snow-capped mountain peak, but a cigar-shaped finial, thank you Schaefer, a gold band clip ring, and a gold clip. The clip is nicely springy and usable, and has a really nice Art Deco shape to it. We shall see the Art Deco features echoed on the nib in a moment. The injection molded plastic cap tapers up to two gold bands, one thin and one thick, and the thick one has a step up and some very crisp engraving. Let's look closer at this engraving because it bears examination. This isn't laser engraved or stamped. This is deeply machine engraved, which is something you don't see anymore. Very, very nice work here. You can feel that engraving with your fingers. Then the cap tapers down to the barrel the barrel is straight until here, where it begins to taper down towards another gold ring. This, of course, is not a piston knob, as it would be on the Mont Blanc 146 or 149, but a full blank cap, as this is a cartridge converter pen. The cap unscrews with one and a quarter turns to reveal a straight tapering section in the same black injection molded plastic with two gold bands one at the threads 
and one on the end of the section. The, the band at the end of the section has a slight flare to it, which is really nice visually and practically. Practically, it's a tactile indicator of the end of the section, and it also prevents staining of the section by ink. Now let's have a close-up look at one of the most impressive parts of this pen, the number 6 size 18 karat gold nib. I mentioned the Art Deco styling of the clip. Well, that design aesthetic is repeated here with this magnificent Art Deco design. I'm a sucker for the circa 1925 design style, which derived much of its aesthetic sensibilities from Cubism like Picasso and Brach, to Fauvism like Matisse and André Derain, with their bold, elegant shapes and colors. I know others prefer the styling of a Mont Blanc nib over this, but I find this nib elegant and stylish and one of the major draws of this fountain pen. And here is the plastic feed. And the nib and feed on this pen are friction fit into the section. The section unscrews to reveal it is a metal housing and there is a proprietary platinum converter nicely matched in gold. And there is a nice gold metal band reinforcing the end of that converter's nipple. The cap posts deeply and securely. And this is another wonderful feature of this fountain pen. It is well balanced, either posted or unposted, but I find it an absolute joy to write with posted. Having held numerous 3776 Century models in my hand over the last year while I dithered about buying one, I'm so glad I waited for this model. I don't have large hands, and this isn't what I'd call an oversized pen, like the Leonardo Officina Italiana Ferrore or the Opus 88 Bella. Those are oversized pens. While the President is a large pen, it certainly isn't as large as those oversized pens. But this pen fits in my hand beautifully and feels a whole lot more substantial a writing instrument than the 3776. I bought this pen from cultpens.com in the UK and I paid £124.87 for it, which is $215.85 Canadian. I also paid another $20 Canadian in duty and customs fees, something I don't have to pay with Apple Bond. That totals $230.85 Canadian, or about $174 US, which I actually think is a pretty awesome deal. At penchalet.com, the pen is $231.99 US, including shipping, but not duty and customs. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Platinum President with some other classic cigar-shaped rip-off pens. Here is a Pen BBS 308, a Leonardo Officina Italiana Furore, A Wingsong 699 Old Style and a Wingsong 626 Balance. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And as you can see, they all post very nicely. And surprisingly, the President ends up being the shortest of the lot. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Platinum President. And it has a broad 18 karat gold nib and the ink today is Ackerman Chateau 
shocking blue. Here's the swatch for the shocking blue along with Visconti blue and Iroshizuku Asagao. Now let's check to see how wet the president is. This is a decently wet pen. As to line variation, this is no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. The pen is fairly stiff and little to no line variation. And I wouldn't say that the pen is bouncy at all. Now this line, according to my Richard Binder chart, comes out as 0.7 millimeters thick which is a Western medium to broad and a Japanese medium to broad. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, that's very smooth, very dry, but also very thin. So very, very large line variation when you turn it over. Not when you push on it, but when you turn it over. Very interesting. And for some quick writing. This feed has no problem keeping up at all. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? It is very interesting that in the same week I was reviewing a scratchy paper shredding piece of crap that could barely get through the writing sample without chucking it in the bin and an elegant beautifully designed well balanced smooth as glass pen that writes so well you want to copy the complete works of Edward de Vere each time you hold it. There couldn't be two writing experiences more divergent than what I endured last Wednesday and this incredible pen this week. I admit that part of my love affair with this pen is how little I paid for it, uh, but there's no remorse here at all. Uh, there is no defect in this pen from how the nib behaves to the workmanship to the design to the overall aesthetic that could possibly attenuate my joy at this purchase. Plus, I was able to use it for a satirical rant about pen design that truly made my week. You can disagree with me all you want and give me a thumbs down. I don't care. It was funny. <laughs> I'm not waiting for you, okay? No offense. This is a Mont Blanc clone. So are a thousand other pens. But what a clone. I've written with a Mont Blanc 149 once. It was Jack's and was a broad oblique. So a very different nib experience from this one. But the 149 was a bit more substantial. Of course, this is m more similar in size to the 146. But you can feel the difference with the Mont Blanc resin, definitely compared to this much lighter plastic. Plus, the Mont Blanc is a piston filler, which adds some back end weight. But this fountain pen holds its own against that pen. It does not feel inferior to it. It feels different. The nib on this platinum is glassy smooth with a, just a hint of that indescribable feeling of feedback, which is so lovely. I love the look. I love the balance in my hand and I absolutely adore the art deco styling of the clip and the nib. If I didn't want to write with it so much, I might take out the ink and leave it posted on my desk just for display. So what do I not like about it? Uh, well, 
there isn't anything that really bugs me. The cap does want to cross thread now and then, so I have to be careful with it, but I, that's similar to a few other of my pens. You feel it cross threading and sort of back it up until it clicks and then go in, but it is a bit, bit wobbly right there. And this isn't so much a criticism as just an observation. But the 18 karat gold nib is as stiff as a board, as is the 14 karat gold nib on the 3776. So the added gold is not any kind of an advantage over steel, in my opinion. But there's not a steel nib option for this model. So now, I guess, I have to send in the clones. Send in the clones! And fill out my copycat lineage of pens with a Schaefer Balance, a Mont Blanc 146, a Sailor 1911 large, and a Pilot 823. Then I will be able to determine by filtering my observations through my own objective analysis whether the new Wingsung 699 piston filler I'm ordering tomorrow is really an outrageous steal or just following a hundred years of tradition. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.